Morning. It is that. Oh, blimey. That's not cricket, is it? Uh, <laughs> I've got a bit of storm damage in here because I didn't come up last week after the storms. And uh, looks like the oak. That's one less oak to worry about. <laughs> anyway, so getting back to where I was. Uh, Hartwood are coming up today to do some thinning. My first job is to load up the trailer with some cordwood. Hopefully Hartwood will be here in a few minutes. Cinema. I don't know whether you'll hear me over the noise of the saws, but they're like beavers. It's insane. The amount of folk sawing and then behind me. It's been amazing. It's only about 10 o'clock this morning, half past 10. So many oaks fell today. These guys are so efficient. Uh, all trained, assured. Brilliant. It's like they're nearly done in here. Probably about another half a dozen to go. <laughs> hey, Paddy, you alright? Yeah. Good. Had a good day? Yeah, that's a bit raw, but uh, you get your filming done? I've done a bit, yeah. Good. Why well, you watch them? I watch all of them. Do you? Oh, well done. Well, you put them up. <laughs> okay. Don't you know your subscribers? It doesn't tell you. It just tells you how many views you got. It doesn't tell you who's okay. viewed it. Oh. The Hotwood team are just getting off. I'm going to carry on for a bit longer. Hope to try and get another couple of hours in. Should get some stuff out there coming back next Monday, all being well, which will mean that if I drop these few oaks over here, I won't go all down, but I'll get some down. <laughs> so, well, here comes the rain. I've just felled a few more. Look, it's got that one, a few behind me, and then some in the distance over there somewhere. So, yes, that way, sorry. <laughs> Waving me hand about, you weren't even following. Um, anyway, it's raining and the Hartwood team have gone home, so I think I'm gonna go home now. Don't like getting wet. Morning. So I've had to nip back to Rosserston this morning because somebody wants some hedge lane steaks. Got to get two bottles, that's all. Quite a nice spring fresh morning. The birds are in full song this morning. Right, here we go. The filthy bramble bit me. Savage stuff. The sun's bright, isn't it? Uh, so we're about in the middle of the woodland at the moment. So I've got to switch arms, you're heavy.
Was I got some, there was some willow in the top end in the entrance way, and it's just a bit of self set willow, and it shoots up pretty straight rods. So what I did is I got some cuttings, and I stuck them in. So these bits in the foreground, these are all cuttings I just put in the ground about four or five years ago, and odd times I just keep putting more in and more in. I put some hazel in there. That was in wood log number one. I put a few hazel in there. We've got some self setters. And then there's a bit more willow down there. And then what I've just been doing, you might have just seen on the time lapse, is a couple of bigger willows that I've never actually ever cut down. And apologies if you're a hedge layer, because this is a bit of a car crash. But what I've done is I've pleached over a couple of stems. <clears throat> a bit high, willow doesn't pleach particularly well. But I thought if I can lay it in sort of the rows and pleach it over, what my idea was is that it might send up a bit like a, uh, a hedge laying it send up some nice rods off the stem uh, and also it will send them up off the stool as well so I've laid one that way, one that way that one's been laid there, look and I've done another little one over there <clears throat> it just seemed a shame to cut off completely when I can pleach it over which means it's still attached to the root system and it might send up vertical rods then in the years to come so I've just been harvesting actually there's a chap who wanted some hedge lane steaks and he said, you got any binders? It's like, no, not really. We haven't got any hazel binders at all. Anyway, I come down here and once these are dressed, they're half decent willow binders. Can't beat a bit of paracord. Uh, I've just strapped on those binders and stakes on the roof and I've run out of ratchet straps. So uh, I've used paracord and I've got to put some beam poles on this side of the roof because I've run out of room in the trailer. And so I shall use paracord for that. It's good stuff. I'll drop a couple of points on these beam poles and bundle them up. They're all loaded up. Binders, hedging stakes, beam poles, more beam poles. Well, I'll tell you what, I need something else, yeah? Right, that's better. I've got my poles on now. I've got the poles free in. Oops, did you see that? Where there's blame as a claim. Right, so these are my Rabinias. Rabinia pseudo acacia. I grow these from seed. Uh, which I think I've mentioned before. Um, anyway, so they're doing okay. They're not, they're not that big really. They're only a year old. They're perhaps a bit small really to go in the woodland. Very delicate. You might be able to see little spikes on them. They're quite savage spikes, but they're an interesting tree. Nitrogen fixer. They also make good coppice. Fast growers. A very resilient timber. Incredibly dense. Um, so yeah, a bit of an all-rounder really. Um, so I'm going to go and plant these where I took the ash down. So ideally, I would have liked to have got all of these ash out of here. But unfortunately this morning, Ellie Ray was sick. So Karen's at home today. Karen would hopefully we're going to get this out and stack it up that top end near my baskets. But uh, that's not happened, so that's a bit frustrating but you can't help being ill so that's that so I'm going to plant the rabinias more in this area here ah so that's good got them in been meaning to get them in for ages months because uh, I much prefer to do my planting in November December than ever doing it on the 1st of March because I just feel the roots have had a chance to grow and settle on nice mild days you see you might not see any activity above ground but you'll see the the root systems underneath the ground will be gradually just establishing of course this time of year it's not great so uh, an ideal mulch around these would be good maybe a bit of cardboard and some wood chip some of this branch logins would be all right just a couple of little buckets around each one the gardening job this morning Lady I've been worked for for years, probably a decade or more, come once a month. Anyway, it's been miserable wet morning, I've got 
back feels cold and wet. But uh, a bit of an epic day today doing all the deliveries. So all that, I've got loaded up yesterday. I've got to go and deliver all that. So I've got stuff on the roof rack. I've got to go and pick up the trailer. A busy afternoon this afternoon. Right, that's one lot of deliveries done. So Ian's got his poles and I've delivered some uh, cordwood and I've delivered some stakes and biters. So that's already done. Now I've got to go and get some hedge lane stakes from up there. And we are really wet here. Right, I'll park you up there a sec. And you can watch while I get wet, cold. Got trench foot now. That's the edge lane stakes turned off. Uh, <laughs> that's the edge lane stakes dropped off. Uh, unbelievably, two young edge layers, probably only in the 20s. You don't see that very often. So that was Eric. And now we're off to go and have a look at a job and measure up. I've got to measure up for some panels next. That's in Leicester. So I've got to go and find that and try and get there before it goes dark an epic day just filling up with fuel and uh, it's about half past seven at night only just finished so a bit of a mammoth one have you ever had a bad day i have been having a lot of bad days just lately <laughs> so this morning didn't start off too well i couldn't get a good start so the plan was it's gonna it was gonna be drizzly rain all day so i thought you know what i need to get some chalk on me no so we got a delayed start then i got a phone call about some cordwood so this guy that's the only positive so far of the day is a guy has come and he's buying all of our cordwood offers in a day or so getting all the cordwood out and he's having pretty much everything i've got and back up to our woodland with a view to making some charcoal. Anyway, I get halfway up the track and there's a lorry stuck again. We're the trailer on and he decided to unleash the trailer and push it out by hand and he didn't. He managed to push straight into the ditch. His mate came up and pushed it in the ditch even more, which was absolutely perfect. And then his lorry got stuck and has dug his way into a hole into the track and his back wheels are buried. So I had to back down with the trailer on and Karen had to back down all the way down back down the track and the recovery trucks arrived which is this huge great Bedford Unimog style truck absolute monster I'll see if I can get a video of it on the way out well they've been up there about an hour and I've not seen anything of them yet so uh, it clearly isn't going well which neither is my day because I was thinking Karen had got to go home because there's no way she'll make it up the track with a car now uh, and I thought I'll wait for the recovery truck getting gone and i can go up there get some firewood for home and perhaps have a bit of a setup and empty the charcoal retort get the other one set up ready for early start next week because we've had the potential to sell 150 boxes of charcoal only the only way i can do that order is to hit the ground running and today has not been the day and now it's dry um, as in it's not raining and i can't do anything i'm stuck in the van i'd also got to go and pick up a trailer frame from Tamworth and that guy didn't give me the right phone number so I've rang him and the phone number won't ring because there's a digit missing off the mobile number so now I'm waiting on the auction site to get in touch with him so that um, I can actually contact because I could have gone and done that this afternoon I could have gone and picked that up but no I still can't do that so I'm a bit fed up really I'm sure it'll all come good. I mean, compared to others, it's not really a bad day, but you make these plans and it just doesn't seem to quite work out. There's a Shipton's truck. Awesome bit of kit, that is. Look at that brute. Good bit of kit on there. We'll go and see what mess they've made then, shall we? Just a couple of 
completely slid off the road there, straight into the slop. Alright, that's that, isn't it? Great burn. But this can be a bit of a lottery sometimes. So I had a part box you see when I first started. That's the brown ends, they'll go back in. I'm gonna reload that up now. I've had that much rain, even the bottom of the dragon has filled up with mush and water. So I've got to leave the lid up and let that dry out now. Well, I managed to pot on and get a little bit done. Empty the retorts and start again with the other ones. Dress some uh, bean poles and get them pointed. Got them loaded up. And what else have we done? I had a bit of a tidy up, but I haven't really made a big dent in that, to be honest, yet. Uh, all in good time. Sun's out, it's always great. The forecast looks good for next week. And uh, so thanks for watching again this one. And we'll see you on the next video. Hope you can join us. And if you want to subscribe, that'd be just awesome. Thanks. That's those done, so you'll probably see down here I've got some filling to do. It seemed easier to me to fill up to the architrave rather than to try and get the architrave over the top of the plaster. So I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but so a, there is a little bit of filling work to be done. And the nosing's on, and then that side it's all done, and then onto the other window. So this side's done, like I say, there's a fair bit of filling to do and some repaint. You can see that, how dark it is. And then underneath I've got some filling to do as well. So yeah, there's a bit of work to be done yet. And then this side, the head's all been done. Right, I hope you can see that. So this is some of my really poor attempt at fillings. This is the first fill on this side. And I use a Wix filler, which is pretty good. Uh, it's really easy to sand. So while I'm much more interested to uh, traditional methods of, um, especially Victorian houses, this would all have been uh, lime plaster, but it's all been replaced with gypsum now. So, uh, modern fillers aren't ideal really, but this is all I've got and this is all of my experience levels. I've just done the bottom of that. I popped a bit of plasterboard in, which you probably saw on the time lapse, um, because it's about the best way of filling that. 
So uh, yeah, we've got to probably do another couple of uh, top ups yet. On this side, we've just done. If we can just shield the light out of that. Is that better? Um, so this may well sand actually now and then get ready for painting again, which would be good. The bottom has got to have another fill yet, I think. Oops, lazy. And then this side, I think that's ready for sanding as well then. But there's no point sanding till we're all ready, so we'll get the sanding and painting done all in one day. But this is the filler. There we go, look. Really good stuff, that is. 